Hi YouTube, Brian James on Microfall Thirds Guy with you once again. Very, very, very quick update uh, today. Two things. Um, one, have a look, keep watching till the end of this video because there's a little bit about um, new possible new sensor information coming out. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. But first of all, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off once and for all this 14mm um, f2.5 review. This will now be the fourth video I've done in relation to that one little tiny lens, the smallest lens I've used and it's got the most information on it, but it's really useful. Um, you'll have seen it a few times that I've released a few videos and I had my, my main review video, which is the longer one, which I've released today. There's a link there to it, um, which is giving, me the, giving you the details of how I found it as a, a, a still user and a, a proper rundown of the specs. But I decided the other day also to do a very quick and dirty walk around and use it as a vlogging camera lens and I put it on my GX8 and when I got the footage back um, it was shaky, shaky to say the least. Um, and that's fine, I'm a very kinesthetic person, I learn kinesthetically, I don't tend to read instruction books, I tend to learn by doing. Um, and that's got advantages and disadvantages of course because um, well, you can get to the point where you can miss the miss the main point, but you can learn all sorts of other ways to get to the same place. If you look in the instruction books, it's always a very sanitized and very uh, regulated sort of way of using this. this is how it works. This is the best way. Just do it this way. Kinesthetic learners tend to go out and pull things apart and, um, and play with things and learn how to get to the same sort of objective. Then they'll read the book, and that's what I tend to, to do. And that's what I did on this one. And I found out, of course, that the GX8, although it has um, in-body stabilization, five-axis stabilization, it only works on stills. It doesn't work on video unless you have a lens with image stabilization in, in which case you get the dual IS. If you have an unstabilized lens, it doesn't work. It switches off. Of course, I found that out afterwards, which is great. Wonderful way to do it. I like learning that way. I think a lot of people operate that way in the real world. Um, so I decided I was going to stick this on to my uh, Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II yesterday. Took that out, and of course, the image stabilization on that. It's it's it only uses normally um, unstabilized lenses, so it worked perfectly. Big difference in results. Now. As I say, I've got a really good community on this channel, and I really thank you all for uh, doing it. Oh, by the way, the links for both of those videos, uh, you'll have seen above. Um, so just if you missed them, just go back a little bit, and you'll see there's a link for each of those two videos that I've just done. Um, but the, the people on this channel are really good because um, the, the, the comments I get back are really constructive. There was lots of comments about the GX8 in the first place, about the uh, instability on it. And I got some comments yesterday about the about the difference in the Olympus. And that prompted a couple of things. One, my friend Graham, who contributes quite a lot on this. Hi, Graham, how are you doing? Got a very good channel, by the way. Check out Graham's channel. Um, but he commented about the fact that he was interested in buying the, the 14mm lens, but he is a GX9 user. And he had concerns that if it wasn't good on the GX8, was it going to be just as unstable on the GX9? Now, what I've done is I've had a look at the instruction books for each of those um, for each of those cameras. The GX8. I'll put a, a link to the page uh, from the instruction manual about the IBIS, and you'll see on there. If you look at the bottom right, you'll see on that that it says that for the unstabilized lenses on video, you've got no IBIS. If I'd read the book, I would have known that, and I haven't seen this anywhere else online either, which is quite interesting. So, none of the reviews on the lens have pointed this out. And I think it's quite an important point, considering a lot of people are going on to shooting video these days. So the GX8, if you look in the bottom right hand corner on its instruction manual page, it does not have IBIS on for unstabilised lenses. Looking on the GX9, and there's a link to the part of the page above, there's a, in fact it's not above, it's, it's showing now. Uh, the GX9 on the other hand does have IBIS according to its instruction book. Um, for unstabilized lenses, so it's different to the GX8. Although I haven't tried the GX9 to confirm this, I would think there's a 99.9% .9 chance it's going to work perfectly with this lens and be stabilized. But also, I did have somebody today um, doing a response to the Olympus video um, and saying, um, How does it work on the G9? Well, I have a G9, and G9 is a similar sort of um, generation to the GX9, they came out a similar sort of time. And I've just been out, and you'll have seen a few videos popping up as we as I'm talking here. They were done on the G9 today, and the G9 again, if you look now, you'll see that on its instructions on the bottom right-hand box, 
sure enough it says that you do have ibis on and when i looked in the back of the viewfinder it did have the um the image stabilization icon showing um and these are probably the worst shots you could imagine. I did none of my, my hand holding techniques to keep it still. I was literally stood there with a the camera in front of my hand, uh, looking through the back, and I could actually feel myself shaking uh, as my heart was beating as, a, as the circulation was going through. So um, I think that uh, if you consider that these were probably shot in the poorest of ways, it shows that the image stabilization does work with this 14mm lens. So thanks for everybody for the comments on those. It really is interesting on that. Uh, if you haven't seen the the, uh, the main review video, there's a link above to that now. Um, by all means, go and have a look. Um, I think you'll find that um, I'm really quite partial to that little tiny lens. It may be the smallest lens I've, I've tested physically, but it's a cracking little piece of kit. Um, so that I'll, I'll I'll put it I'll put the the 14 mil 2.5 story to bed now. I think we've covered that fairly well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just the fact that the GX8 doesn't have the stability. And as I've said a few times, I love buying used cameras, second-hand cameras, uh, pre-owned ones. But the problem with buying those is they're not the newest of cameras, which means they don't have all the newest technology. There's your trade-off for getting something less expensive. Uh, you don't necessarily get all the, all the newest bits and pieces on it. So you pay your money, it takes your choice. The other thing that I've seen was I was watching uh, the I was well I was reading a review last night and watching a couple of videos, and it looks like Sony have announced the uh, a, a 23 megapixel Micro Four Thirds stacked sensor, um, which has got some really really impressive specs. If you know what a stacked sensor is, have a look on the end. There's loads of reviews on what st stacked sensors are. But um, they give a, a much better approach to things like um, being used as an electronic shutter rather than mechanical shutter to be able to get uh, information off cleanly and smoothly and, and fast. And there's all sorts of big advantages to it. But it looks like Sony are doing a 23 megapixel stacked sensor for Micro Four Thirds. And it's, the spec on it, although not officially announced, the spec on it uh, does look incredibly similar to what um, Panasonic are talking about in the new GH6, which is coming out towards the end of this year. So it'd be interested to see if that Sony sensor goes into that camera. I think it possibly will. The other thing is as well, of course, that uh, it did prompt a discussion online as to whether Sony are considering entering the Micro Four Thirds um, camera manufacturer side. It's it's a rumour. I personally don't believe so. I think Sony have got a fantastic market in what they already have with the full frame and APS-C. The full frame mirrorless, especially with the A7, A9 and new A1 series cameras, they, they really have got a, a, a very, very strong market in there. And remember, they've already been um, producing sensors for Micro Four Thirds for other manufacturers for some time. This isn't a new departure for Sony to go into Micro Four Thirds sensor manufacturer. So it'll be interesting to see if that's the new way. Is this going to be the way that we go? We have talked about high megapixels. Uh, this isn't a great deal difference. Two to three megapixel difference isn't a huge amount when you're considering uh, you're going from 20 to 23. But does this mean that we've got um, a new sensor with better quality? Um, I think it's quite exciting if that's the case because I'm not really too worried about having more megapixels particularly but i think the ability to um to use electronic shutter at higher rates and avoid some of the distortion issues that you get by using electronic shutters and also um insofar as much higher frame rate on video could really be um, a, a crucial thing for the micro four thirds world so I'm, I'm interested to see what you think let me know in the comments below as i've said the comments i'm really um really enjoy reading them and as, as you've seen i i do try and respond either by reply or by doing something online here. So leave a comments below. Once again, if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, if you find my channel useful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell below. And also make sure that you hit all when you do the notification bell, otherwise you'll miss out on some of the notes when I release new videos. If you've enjoyed it as well, please give me a big thumbs up. That really helps get this channel spread around. And I'm always, always open for a cup of coffee. If you'd like to give me a cup of coffee and donate a, a quick cup of for me, there's a PayPal link below. Important thing though, the most important thing I do in any of my videos is just to say, remember to keep on taking your camera out. Remember to keep on using it. And remember to keep on enjoying your photography. Till the next time, Brian James. Bye-bye.